Hi, I'm Jason Hobbs. This is example 14 of how I organize a digital marketing strategy. This time for a local Mexican restaurant that I just really love the food. And they still don't have a website, so it just made sense. So the status quo snapshots where I like to start, I like to just get a basic idea. And obviously these are unresearched, but you know, I just wanted to kind of walk through the same process, right? So the website, no, they don't have that. It's obviously not mobile responsive. They don't have any e-commerce and the email list, they don't have either. Now the social profiles, they do have Facebook brand page and that's largely, and they have a bunch of reviews on Facebook and on other like TripAdvisor and Google and so forth. So, and I mean, they've been around for years and they have really, really good food. And they have a Mexican buffet, which is, is really, really good food. So even if you don't have a website, like still understanding there's different signals that are just being created automatically online because of this offline business, even though the business doesn't have their own you know, website, it's still, it doesn't matter. It still happens, right? And Bright Local can kind of, because one of the things that local is focused on is they're called citations. So you get the name, the address, and the phone number of a business. Anywhere that that shows up on the web, you want it to match up 100%. And there's a lot of different ways that that happens, like obviously Facebook and you know, Yelp and so forth. And then there's aggregator services that push to a bunch of different places and Bright Local is able to kind of help with all of that. Another thing would be the GT metric speed report, but obviously irrelevant since they don't have their own website. And what we would be doing all this research for is to build out a SWOT chart, which is the strengths and weaknesses and the opportunities and the threats for this brand. So down at the bottom, you see bottom right, 161 Google reviews. You see the um, 4.8 from 74 people on Facebook. So definitely there's Yelp has five reviews for a 4.5 rating. They already have this stuff that's helping them, but it doesn't have anywhere to send this juice, so to speak. And that would be their website. So the goal of this strategy would be to build the Lalomita brand and revenue, obviously, right? Now, the customer point of view is just folks within 40 miles that like 100% authentic Mexican food. If their idea of fine dining Mexican or the best Mexican food in the world is Taco Bell, then they're probably not a candidate. And the pressing problem would be frictionless access to authentic Mexican food. And what I mean by that is they have great food. They have a buffet. Typically, the only bottleneck is to pay at the cashier. So allowing people to start to check out from their phone and so forth would just be a smart move. Plus, I know for me, I order from there takeout a lot. And I think other people in this area do as well. So allowing people to order takeout where they don't have to call and place the order, they can just you know, place it from their phone and then come pick it up and pay from their phone and just come pick it up, that would be a lot less friction. Now, the plan solution-wise is friction-free access, and that comes from organizing all of their efforts around their domain name. So lalamitafitzgerald.com or whatever they want to set up. And then after that, everything happens there on that actual website, right? And so that is the solution would be, you now have a, a digital version of the Lalomita experience when you go in. So now you're able to pay, you're able to order, you're able to check out their menu, you're able to place a pickup order instead of having to call, etc. And where they would access the solution would be the website, this web store. And obviously they would have the same, you know, normal hours of operation, right? Now, the value is just for people, it's just less effort. The, the other Mexican restaurants in the area, and there are a couple, and they're not bad, but to me, I just, I like La Lomita better and as far as the food. So understanding that, making it to where I have to put less effort and it's the best product, I mean, that's just a lot of value for people, right? I would focus on 100% authentic Mexican food. And when I was creating video for them, I would start with video and I would have the team behind it teach by way of video. And you could share recipes if they wanted to. I would, I would create Lalomita 
Fitzgerald or whatever, and that would be a brand in my mind. And the the key tagline is just like they're already using, which is 100% authentic Mexican food. So the more that they help people understand how to make Mexican food through their media, they're going to have so many other people that don't want to make it, but are going to go there because of it. It makes total sense to me, but I a lot of times giving away their acumen, so to speak, is not something that most folks are real comfortable with to begin with until they start to try it out and you know to start to see the results, right? So the medium plan, it would be, again, share the authentic Mexican food, the people interested in learning about 100% authentic Mexican food. And I would share those secrets with the format. So you could have kind of like a cooking show where they just walk through in a three or five minute video. It doesn't have to be or 30 minute video, whatever they want to do. And it would really come back to the talent in that instance, as far as that would drive the format. But definitely the educational aspect is going to be would be there. I think that there's any number of CPG or you know consumer packaged goods that they could do going forward. It's such a good vibe when you go in there. I would want to translate that into the videos is really what it boils down to. And you know, and it's obvious that somebody knows what they're doing because of all the food that I've eaten there has just been really, really good every time for years. So the schedule... I would focus on at least weekly, if not twice weekly to start with and then grow from there. But it would really boil down to what they're most comfortable with and and what the way, you know, if it's if it's just the two people that run it or if it's them and the team and they're having different ones do different things. And there's so many different possibilities, especially with people with smartphones and the Internet and you know so forth. And I would really love to see the brand kind of take advantage of that. So, all right, so media creation, I use Slide Deck into Soapbox by Wistia and use iMovie. Uh, because I have the pro version of Soapbox by Wistia, I can download the digital MP3 or MP4 file, excuse me, and edit that in iMovie. And then that's where the deliverable comes from, right? And then the deliverable is that actual episode. Like, for instance, this is example 14 it's one episode however you also end up with the audio version and then you make a one minute version that's vertical for instagram and other stuff as well depending on which i would definitely go with instagram for them they're already on facebook and i would put some ad money towards the the instagram definitely just i don't think they'll have much trouble targeting locally to you know, kind of drive in some extra people for different lunch rushes or dinner rushes or whatever if they want to but i wouldn't really be more you know so focused on turning the transaction or turning the till if you will when doing the paid ads i would focus on brand just build the brand let people know about it you have these educational videos where you're educating people on how to you know do 100 percent authentic mexican food and it's just going to naturally establish them as a authority. So the media distribution, definitely, I always put it into Wistia when I'm going to put the video on my website. That gives me total control of the player. It gives me additional analytics for you know people that watch the video. Definitely the Facebook brand page. I would start a YouTube channel for them. And then uh, once again, it's not listed here, but Instagram, I would definitely add that for them. So the audio anchor.fm so that it'll automatically push the podcast to den- different podcasting platforms like it does for mine. And then it would be Lalamito Fitzgerald.com or whatever slash blog where we would you know, just put all the, uh, the written stuff, including recipes. So the foundation would be the store. And the idea is the friction-free experience. And the idea behind it is just keeping it simple for people. So on the homepage, when they go to the homepage, number one, it is mobile responsive. The Essence Pro theme from StudioPress.com. It's 130 bucks if you've never bought anything from them before. The homepage widget areas were was where I primarily focused. And here is the working demo. So when you go to JasonOpsLLC.com forward slash example dash and then one, four, the numbers one and four together, scroll down and you're gonna see a big green button to go see the demo. And this is the demo and where you can log in and you can set up an account, et cetera, uh, right there on the homepage. 
the idea being just once again frictionless let's let people place their orders let's let people you know monitor their orders and you could easily market to where people would automatically know that okay it's ready for pickup and that would be something or t send a text message that it's ready for pickup there's any number of possibilities that's just once again you're removing the friction for people the products i would start with the menu I mean, it's a pretty big menu, so you're starting with a lot, but I would start there. Anytime you want, now you can order from us here, same hours. And then as far as WooCommerce plugins, there may very well be some that would be ideal for them, but nothing that jumps out at me immediately. The customer conversation, two ears and one mouth is what I always focus on. And with them, I'd add live chat and put it, once again, it's on that computer that sits by the register at the restaurant. And I think that most people that are going to be using live chat are asking a very pertinent, relevant, quick question, and they just didn't, they'd rather not have to talk on the phone. So, and then adding email, having an actual list, letting people know what's going on there. I don't think they have any trouble starting to build a list and letting people know, hey, this is what we have going on. And just starting to let people kind of self-segment themselves and say, hey, I'm interested in this, or I'm interested in that. So the campaigns get attention. I'd start with the origin story. And then from there, I'd focus on 100% authentic Mexican food. Like that's that's the thrust of the message. And then there's so many different pieces that, or ways that you can go about that, just depending on what the talent, as far as the staff at La Lomita, what they prefer. But I'd start with the video telling the origin story and just put it on record, so to speak, document it. The keep attention, I you could definitely run some remarketing campaigns, but really the big one that I would do is just starting that email list. And I'd use drift.com, the same as the live chat, to do that. But yeah, I would definitely, you could do some remarketing and all, but for me, that's more of a transaction base, so to speak. And like I was saying earlier, my gut tells me that it would just be brand anytime that their ad spend went out. Like I would just, I'd focus on the brand, not trying to turn the till. Now the foundation, an example would be local citations. And I, I touched on this earlier. So brightlocal.com for five bucks per site, they'll go, they have a process that they do to where they verify that your name, address, and phone number is listed properly on all the different places. So this was example 14, La Lomita, Mexican restaurant. How much would it cost if you wanted to do it yourself? 748 to start 229 per month that's the managed woocommerce hosting the beginner plan from liquidweb.com that's drift.com for two live chat operators and email and then you have the video hosting and analytics from wistia.com because once again with the video being the, the flagship of the media then you're going to want to put that on the website using the wistia player or whatever all right, so gatherup.com would be the customer feedback loop. I would start that immediately as well. The idea behind it is as people dine with them, it sends them an email giving them on a scale of one to 10, you know, please rate, would you share La Lomita with other folks? And based on if they give a one to eight response, then I consider they put them into a customer service queue. And then if it's a nine or a 10 that people give, then they thank them and they give them shortcut links as far as if they want to go and say something public. 300 bucks per year for the wistia.com forward slash soapbox. That's something that could definitely be very easy for them to create some content. It may be a little bit more per year. I have to take a second and peek at that. 130 bucks as a, alluded to previously for studiopress.com for the Essence Pro theme. But if you want to use any of the WooCommerce enabled themes, including their Foodie Pro, which with the recipes and all may very well be a better idea. If you have questions, Jason at JasonOpsLLC.com or myself, 912-381-6318. Please leave a, your name and number a message, basically. If I don't, because I, I don't know your number, I'm not going to answer. And, but I definitely will check the message and get back to you ASAP. And as far as the 15th example, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do another restaurant that's local, Kobe.